Welcome back to the Saints and Alumni Show right here on WVCR, 88.3 The Saint. I'm your host this week, Brandon Murphy, class of 2017, from the Office of Alumni Engagement. And this week, I am joined by Davina Mayor dunham class of 2020, Assistant Vice President for Mission and the Director of the Damiata Cross Cultural Center here at Siena College. A reminder to everyone listening to us that there are a few ways to listen to the Saints and Alumni Show, a bi-weekly podcast highlighting members of the Siena community. You can listen right here on WVCR, 88.3 The Saint, and iHeartRadio. And you can also subscribe to the Siena Alumni YouTube channel, Spotify, Apple, and any other major podcast platform. Davina, it's just been about a month and a half since you officially began your new role as AVP of Mission and Director of the Damiata Center. And we will highlight a lot of that mission today in the second segment, but it's your first time on the show. I want to officially welcome you to the position and, and the podcast. How are things been the last month, month and a half here at Siena College? Thank you for having me. Um, how has things been? It's been awesome. It's been a great transition. It's been hectic. It's been fun, um, but we have really good people supporting me, so it's been a very good time getting in and getting to the groove of things and people telling me about what's been going on and how we can improve Damietta. And it's already like you've been on this podcast. You've already hinted at the team ahead that you have, and, mm-hmm. and we'll highlight uh, a few of those team members later on in the show today, but but we always begin as, as tradition, uh, how our uh, guests ended up attending Siena or working at Siena, and mm-hmm. I know that when we met for the pre-interview, We could do uh, probably two episodes of talking about life in downtown Troy. Um, And so you grew up locally, Davina. And, you know, we have a lot of uh, local guests on the show from time to time, but they all have kind of different paths and -hmm. reasons for why they wanted to end up at Siena. For you as a a local high school student um, looking at colleges, kind of how did Siena begin to be on your radar? And what were some of those deciding factors that, that made you become a Siena Saint? Okay, so I went on many college visits before I did, like settled on Siena. Um, I had family members that had gone to the Siena. I had many family members that always would go to the games. So my cousin goes to Manhattan College, so they would always go to the games when their school was playing Siena. Um, but then we went to like the accepted students days, which were always like a very like core memory for me. Um, I remember we were at one of them and I like look at my dad and I'm like, dad, why are those guys like dressed up as Yoda? And he was like, those are friars, Davina. He's like, this is a Franciscan school. And I was like, oh, okay. I was like, well, I'll go to any school where people are dressed up like Yoda. So no, I'm just kidding. But, um, that was kind of like the first introduction to Siena, but I just remember how welcoming it is and how nice everybody was. And I was like, oh, like they care about me. They remembered my name every time I came back. I think I went to like three or four events, um, before I decided that Siena was the place for me. So, yeah, it was great. <laughs> I just came back from a Yankee game this past week and, and drove past Manhattan College, mm-hmm. and, and it's in the Bronx. So I remember that first time I was trying to figure out where mm-hmm. that college was for a, an alumni basketball pregame as well um, and, and visited down there. And you talked about attending open houses. And, and if you're listening now today, Friday evening, uh, there is open house tomorrow at Siena College, October 12th. You can still Damiata register or show there. up day of, and, and Davina will be here talking about the Damiata Center and the mission office as well. Um, and, and again, you know, we had talked about in the first question, you know, we have a lot of local students on as well. Um, and sometimes they commute, sometimes they live on campus. For you, Davina, what was that decision-making process mm-hmm. for you to, to figure out how you wanted to obtain that full college experience and, and what did you choose to do? And can you talk a little bit about mm-hmm. maybe getting that first friend group and roommate and, and, and those first kind of weeks out of the way at Siena College? Yeah. So um, my parents wanted me to get like the full college experience. So I ended up living on campus. And even though I lived like 10 minutes from here, they're like, no, 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 you're going to go and enjoy college and see what it's like to be an adult. And I was like, OK. Um, and I think Sienna at the time created a uh, Google, a group me and a Facebook group uh, for all of, like the incoming freshmen. So that's how I actually met my roommate. And we ended up being roommates freshman year and then I met my core friend group while I was at Siena we like attended like the dance party that they I think they still do and that's how I met like my core group of friends and we had been friends all throughout Siena like you know as you go through Siena your friend groups are going to shift and change but I'm still very close to a lot of my friends now so yeah I was just at a wedding uh a couple weeks ago and you know we had probably five different friend groups in that wedding <laughs> yeah. and they all have different stories of how they met. Yeah. We've all met, you know, freshman year, yeah. but they kind of expand a little bit through the years and you still have that core group that every time you get together, mm-hmm. it, it is nice. And, and sometimes when I get together with my group, 
we, we do talk about the academic side of, of, of the college experience as much yeah. as we like to talk about the social aspect, which we'll get into in the second half of the first segment today. And, and I came in as a, as a business major, and uh, I quickly figured out I could not do math to, to save my life. I, Felt. I went to uh, tutoring three times a week, and I still got a B- in, in quantitative business. Uh, so I switched over to psychology and political science. And, and for you, Davina, you had a similar path where – you came in as, as one vision, and, and because of the way Siena structures the education here, and you can take a lot of different classes, you kind of found your passion in, in another field. Can you talk a little bit about your yeah. academic experience and, and what you got a degree in yeah. here at Siena? Yeah, so I started off as a biochemistry major. Yeah, so <laughs> big, big words, right? So um, started off as chemistry, switched to biochemistry. I thought, okay, I'm going to be a doctor, and I thought that was a great path for me. Um, as I always tell everybody, I love science, but science doesn't love me <laughs> back. So um, I started um, taking a bunch of different classes, and I kind of fell into social work. And I kind of toyed with the idea of doing social work before I got to college, but at the time, it wasn't really like a loved profession. And my parents were like, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> um, so I then ended up switching. Um, Donna McIntosh was one of the professors that really got me like got my passion going for social work and so that's how I kind of was like yes social work is for me. I ended up getting my master's in social work. Um, so that's kind of like my path in academically um, but I'm still very close with the science professors here. The, she always tells the story of how I was in her lab Jody O'Donnell. She always tells people like I was a good lab person. It's just you know, sometimes you just can't sometimes have it you all. You can do the practical <laughs> stuff, but maybe not the other stuff at that time. Yeah. And you hinted at the relationship that you had with uh, Professor Donna uh, McIntosh. In May of 22, she did graduate. Uh, she did retire from Siena College she after did. 27 years of, of serving the Siena community. And, you know, she, you said that she began your passion for social work. But did mm -hmm. that relationship continue to grow with uh, Dr. McIntosh? And, and how did yeah. she kind of impact that, that time for you here on campus? Yeah, so I was very passionate about social work. And I remember distinctly being in her class, like, I had answered some question and she called me the gold star girl from like that point on. And so every time she would see me, she'd always be like, oh, it's Davina, my gold star girl. A lot of pressure. <laughs> yeah, I was like a lot of pressure. But um, we still maintain that relationship. And I still am very close to her now. Like even now when she's retired and doing great things and relaxing and living her. I was like I was saying, I can't wait to be in that retired life. I still got some time. <laughs> but um, no, she still calls me her gold star girl. And I just remember always feeling so seen in her class and like really understanding like what social work was as a profession and if i could say who embodies that that's donna mcintosh like she is social work <laughs> and well, she sparks that fire in all of her students <laughs> and i'm looking forward to talking a little bit about that that fire and passion that she had for the social work program and, and how it's expanded over the 50 years in the second segment of today's show and and you talked a little bit about you know the the inside the classroom and the outside the classroom experiences and and Siena now is in this phase where they're really big on experiential learning mm -hmm. for Siena students and and social work was kind of ahead of the time you know, with, with what they were doing mm -hmm. with the field experience uh, for the listeners that may not know or maybe some alumni listening that were psychology like me that that didn't have that field component can you talk about the process of getting placed uh, why we have that component for social work and, and where you were yes so um Social work is pretty cool because we have an opportunity of participating in internships our junior year and our senior year. So junior year, it's 50 hours. Senior year, it's 450 hours. Um, well, no, it's 400 hours, but total it's 450 hours. So junior year, I was placed at um, Unity House, which is a big organization that helps a lot of non-for-profits. And I was also in their domestic violence shelter. So that kind of sparked my interest of, OK, I think I want to work with this population, but then um, I started shadowing their, their fellow who went into the schools, and that's how it kind of sparked my passion for school social work. So my senior year, I was placed at Rensselaer um, High School for my school placement, and it was like starting to become peak COVID, yeah. so I'm pretty sure... Um, my supervisor had ended up getting sick, and so you kind of just got thrown into it. And you're, So that's kind of where I was like, ah, school social work is for me. So you do get a lot of hands-on experience, and if you think you're not ready, you will become ready by the time you leave social work. And when you go into that master's program, that's one of they say about Siena's social work program is that you're super prepared for your master's program. Um, 
and I did feel super prepared. So when I went to St. Rose, that's where I got mine. I was like, oh, this is like light work. I got this. Like, this is, this is Sienna good for me. prepared me for this. So that was like super nice. And even though that field placement is technically considered an outside of the classroom experiences, mm-hmm. you were still heavily involved in, in literal outside the classroom experiences and mm-hmm. the clubs and organizations that you were involved in to really kind of enhance that Sienna experience that you had. Yes. The first one that, that I have zero experience in because... I was uh, no dancing skills in, in my entire <laughs> life. I have no no DNA in my body to, to dance. Uh, you you were you uh, a it. champion dancer, I believe, uh, with with the Sienna's uh, dance team and, and step team. Can you talk a little bit about that first outside the classroom experience of yeah. of your passion for dancing, kind of what you were involved with on campus and, and memories with that? Yeah. So champion is is a strong <laughs> word to use, but um, I so I used to dance when I was younger, and then when I got here to Siena, I was like, man, I really just really want to go to all the games. Like, and what is one way that I could do that? And I was like, you know what? Let me let me try out for the dance team, and I ended up really really enjoying it at that time. And I think it was really helpful for me too because it provided structure, which is yeah, what you need good. in a college experience. Um, it really pushed me to work on my time management skills. Um, so yeah. I got to do all of the basketball games. We did every men's home game and every woman's home game. And you really got to meet a really core group of friends because we did like a lot of bonding and stuff like that. But before I joined the dance team, I was on the step team, which I'm actually coaching now, which is pretty funny. Um, And I still am friends with everyone that has been on the step team. Um, and we used to do competitions. And if you go in the Damietta Center, you'll see some big trophies in there. Champion that dancer. is that is from when I was here. And that is so cool. So, yeah, I think being a part of outside activities is super important as well. Like, yes, you have your roommate. Yes, you have your core group of friends. But then you also meet additional people that you never would have thought yeah. that you would make friends with or hang out with who will get you connected to other people as well. So it kind of goes back to that networking piece, I guess, but in an informal way. And I've been here for five years now, and it's it's been crazy to see some some – some friends of mine that were 2018, 2019, 2020 that are now back here on campus coaching swimming and diving like Maggie Davenport is or, or leading clubs and organizations and, and continuing that networking. Mm-hmm. Um, we got just under three minutes left in the first uh, portion of today's show. So I want to hold the uh, the advisory council question until the beginning of the next next segment and, and conclude today by talking about uh, the Saint program that we have here at Siena uh, for the orientation weekend that, that you were involved in. For the listeners that may not know, what is a Saint in the acronym sense of orientation and, and what is your roles and responsibilities with that, Davina, as a student when you were here? Okay, so uh, and in the mentoring program specifically? In the, just, in the Saint, Saint... Uh, orientation leader program. Okay. Uh, for uh, for oh, moving yes. day. Um, amazing. So being a Saint is like, well, what we call like doors and like, Franciscan values of like making sure that people feel welcome when they first come here on campus. Um, I had the great opportunity of being a saint. I didn't know I wanted to be a saint until my roommate was like, hey, you should be a saint. So I was like, okay, let me do that. Um, And it was a great leadership building experience. Like it's not something that you think you want to do until you do it. And you unlock this thing in yourself where you're like, oh, this is actually a a lot of fun. And you become really close friends with like the freshmen as well. And you kind of serve as a mentor for them. Um, And then you also make additional friends with your additional saint friends. So um, Saint Week is a, is a huge week here when you're, when you're in yes. that training of it all and, and meeting all the upperclassmen and then actually taking all the, the freshman groups to all yes. the icebreakers that, that we do. Yeah, one week of training and then the actual orientation. So. Which feels like a semester long, you know, with all, all <laughs> yeah. the demand that there is. Uh, and when we come back in the second segment of today's show, we'll, we'll highlight a little bit on that, that social work advisory council that you were involved in, a little bit of the path after Siena, uh, and then hear your vision for the mission office and the Damiata Center. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back here on WVCR, 88 Print Through the Saint. Welcome back to the Saints and Alumni Show right here on WVCR, 88 Print Through the Saint. I'm your host this week, Brandon Murphy, class of 2017, from the Office of Alumni Engagement. And this week, I'm joined by Davina Mayor Dunham, class of 2020, Assistant Vice President for Mission and Director of the Damiata Cross Cultural Center here at Siena College. In segment one, we talked a little bit about uh, your your academic journey uh, in social work and some of those outside of the classroom experiences. And and before we got to the, the spirit and dance, you talked a little bit about the field work. And you actually had a second component to that outside the classroom with being on that advisory council for the social work department. Mm-hmm. Um, as a student, kind of what is your role within that department um, when you were a student on it? And, and kind of what was that overall you know mission for them and, and advising of that department? Yeah. So the advisory board in social work is meant to serve as like a collaborative like partnership between social work and like outside professionals and practitioners. Um, So it could be 
right now it's mostly derived of alumni, but also people who didn't go to Siena um, to kind of talk about their expertise about what's going on right now in the field and how we can kind of build up that curriculum within social work. So as a student, I had an opportunity to be a student rep on that junior and senior year. And we kind of gave our input about what we're seeing in the classroom and what's happening in internship and fields as a student and how we could get some insight or that mentorship from the practitioners that are on that board, but also what else should we be adding to that curriculum? And then we would serve as like the liaison as a student rep between the board and the classroom to tell our peers, like, this is what we learned about. So we had a, a guest on uh, a little while back who was uh, on the Franciscan Council for the Board of Trustees. And it was really great as a student to to make those alumni connections uh, on, a, on an informal basis and on a more formal basis and, and to kind of use those shared experiences that, to help advance that specific department or, uh, or kind of curriculum at Siena, which is great that Siena still does that to this day. And then, then the time comes, you got to graduate from Siena and, and, and move on. Uh, and it's in, we're lucky now to be back here on campus and, and continuing to, to have that Siena experience. Uh, for you, you talked about it briefly getting your master's degree in social mm-hmm. work. Can you talk a little bit about kind of those couple of years after college before you came back here, Mm -hmm. you know, getting your master's degree, working in school 18 and and working within that social work industry. Yeah. So uh, like most students, I had no idea what I wanted to do when I graduated Siena. So I kind of was like, maybe I should go to grad school. And lucky for me, COVID happened. So it was probably the best choice. (laughs) So I was in uh, my master's program during that time. Half of it was online. Half of it was in person. I went to the College of St. Rose. Um, and I was in their advanced standing program, which just means you can get your master's degree in one year instead of two um, if you get a degree in social work from an accredited program, which Sienna does. Um, and then from there, uh, I decided to go into the field of school social work at School 18, um, which is in Troy, neighbors. Um, and I worked b- with children between the ages of five and 12 and then also from 16 to 18. So um, I I think that my time there has really helped me here because it just helps you see where students are developmentally and like how it all comes for full circle when you come back to college. So I always have to think now and then because, you know, I'm always in that alumni phase where, you know, I'm talking to people that are 85 and I'm talking to people that are 21 and they all want to be, you know, different types of storytelling and different types of connections. Mm -hmm. Um, And Sienna does a really good job speaking of that storytelling on all different levels of ages. Uh, and I want to now kind of pocket these next two questions into one, because it's actually how we first met uh, over the summertime. And that was the the planning of the 50th social work event in your previous role as the program coordinator at Siena College. Uh, on November 2nd, uh, here at Siena College in the Maloney Great Room, uh, Siena will be celebrating 50 years of social work at Siena College. And I want to give a little time now for you to highlight your time as the program coordinator at Siena Mm -hmm. and really in the planning process of this 50th event. And what attendees and and listeners who have not yet registered, which you can do so Mm -hmm. at siena.edu slash alumni slash events, what they're going to expect at that 50th event. So, so Davina, can you highlight your time as the program coordinator and what what the event is going to be like? Yes. So as a program coordinator, I had an amazing opportunity to work closely with the faculty within the social work department, as well as the students, you know, organizing professional development workshops, as well as different events that students can participate in, whether it be graduate school, resume workshop, um, things like that to help really prepare them for their time after Siena. Um, And then I oversaw admissions and all this fun stuff. And then, as you had mentioned before, a part of that is also our bigger events, like our 50th anniversary, which will be happening November 2nd in the Great Maloney Room from 1 to 5. Um, And within that event, um, you will have an opportunity to meet a generation's worth of alumni that had come to Siena to get their social work degree, as well as get a video message from Chuck and a closing from Maggie. And we'll have um, a prayer from Mark um, to kind of bring the event together. There'll be food and games and an interactive engagement event where we're kind of doing a family feud kind (laughs) of style where it's like, you know, as they said, baked professionals and half-baked professionals. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm gonna, this going to be great. <laughs> um, so it's going to be really good. Um, I'm actually working with my colleague Cynthia Bott to make the script as we speak. So it's going to be a really fun event. It's supposed to be everybody coming together and talking about what they've done for the past, you know, I don't know. It could be 50 for some and also give the students who it's free for yep. an opportunity to uh, network and meet some mentors possibly. 
And I know that, um, you know, it's 50 years, so it's all uh, all ages can attend, right? The students are going to attend. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the first graduates hopefully will be, will be able to attend as well. And yep. some young alumni who kind of are now in the industry firsthand again will be able to network with all of the, with all the current students. And and it's a it's a simultaneous role for you because this past summer you were also uh, named as the AVP of mission at Siena College and the director of the Damiata Center. And and the mission office is, is, is a little bit of a broad office with a lot of sub departments. And and when I say mission office, I want to make sure our listeners kind of understand mm-hmm. what that structure is kind of like. So Davina, yeah. can you kind of break down what the mission office does here at the college and mm-hmm. what are those sub departments that help that mission be completed? Yeah, so the mission office here at Siena kind of focuses on the Siena mission, which is really looking at those Franciscan values, whether it's person-centered, inclusivity, and um, all of that. But then underneath that is the different subsets of like categories. I don't know if categories is the right word, but uh, we have the, we're women's, in the family feud mindset. <laughs> yeah, we're in the family <laughs> feud mindset right now. But we have um, the Women's Center. We have the mentoring program. We have the chaplain's office and the Damietta Center, which are kind of like the focal points of taking that first that person centered approach and, you know, having different conversations around different challenges that people have and or interfaith dialogue. And I said you're playing a, a dual role at this time because of the AVP mission and, and the 50th event, yeah. but it's really like a trio because of the director <laughs> yeah. of the Damiata Center yeah. as well. And and that's one of those subgroups and, and offices within the mission office. And, mm-hmm. and as you mentioned, um, you know, the story of the Damiata dates back to the year 1219 as, as Francis urged his brothers and, and public officials to, to have the bells rung during the day to, to call Christian people to prayer and practice as he experienced with the Muslim call to prayer and bringing that type of of, of roots to Siena College within the office. Mm-hmm. Um, can you kind of highlight a little bit about, you know, the experiences and, and kind of the events that happen within the Damiata Center, mm-hmm. kind of who's involved and, 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 what, and what that yeah. does here and, and where it's located at Siena? Yes. So uh, the Damiata Center is located in the Caesarean Student Union, also known as SSU, on the first floor. Um, through a door, you'll pass some student senate offices, and in the back, you'll see a great lounge with giant bee bags and couches for you to hang out with your friends. Um, and in that center, it's kind of like a focal point of how we kind of celebrate different intersectional identities here on campus and um, what it means to be a saint, but also have your cultural background with you. Um, so a lot of the work that comes through the Damietta Center is person-centered, um, and we focus on big events, as you'd mentioned. We have Fall Fusion coming up December 7th, open to anybody who is interested in coming to see. Theme is Beach Bash. Ooh. Yes, so come with your floaties. Um, there'll hopefully be raffles and prizes to who has the best looking beach bash attire um so that is one event but then we have like our expose we have unity day we have multicultural fest we have the drag show so underneath the umbrella of damietta we also have different subgroups um we have the latin student community latin student association black student union muslim student association jewish student association international students so anybody who has um really for anyone to come and just share different identities, different aspects of culture, and we want to get that out on the campus. Yeah. And you talked about a lot of those um, affinity groups with alumni that, that I know when we met for the pre-interview, uh, we want to we wanna keep connected. They, they have a, a specific passion and a rooted experience because of that Damiata Center yeah. and some of those bigger events that you talked about, but also just some of those one-off events or just the natural get-togethers within the center um, and, and, and part of that vision is, is opening up, a, hopefully, a podcast of, of Cafe Damiata to understand these experiences for these students to connect with alumni to continue to understand these types of uh, cross-cultural experiences. Can you talk a little bit about what this vision is for, for Cafe Damiata, mm-hmm. how it's maybe going to kind of be structured and, and what you look yeah. to, to do with it? So Cafe Damietta is kind of a student-led um, group, um, student-led workers who kind of focus on either support groups, whether that's just having organic conversations about experiences or just to share culture. So the, that's what the Cafe Damietta experience is about, right? So an example is like, you know, Brandon, what's your favorite home-cooked meal that you like? Well, see, I'm going to go, I, I, ironically, I'm cooking it for dinner tonight, is, uh, <laughs> chicken riggies. Uh, it's a it's a Utica Italian staple where I grew up in Utica and I always go with no spice, uh, even though it's a, it's a, it's a supposed to be a spicy dish, but I but I can't do it. So I'd go with chicken riggies. Okay, and wh- why why is that like important for you? Well, for me, it's it's actually kind of crazy because 
I, you know, I probably should say something like shepherd's pie because all of my family is from Ireland and all of my, uh, my, my mom's side is from Poland. So I should probably say pierogies. Um, but mm. just growing up in Utica on that side of the experience of, of just diving myself into the friend groups in high school uh, that were Italian or the, 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 the Utica, you know, just atmosphere. Uh, it was always a staple dish that you'd have around around the holidays. So that, that'd be like my main my main one I, I would try to cook, even though it's always not the best. Yeah. So those are like kind of some of the conversations that we would be having on Cafe Damietta is just to kind of share the different food cultures, maybe even share recipes, you know, if you want to. Put me to. on. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's what that what that would kind of entail. And uh, the name just draws me in automatically. Cafe, Cafe Damietta. So I'm really mm-hmm. excited to to see how that continues to grow for the next year. And and within the next you know 90 seconds to two minutes that we have left on today's show, I want to just talk about the overall vision that you have for, for the center uh, and for the mission office. If we had you on this time again next year, what, what can listeners expect overall from, from you and your team and, and that, that Siena student experience and, and some of those alumni affinity groups as well? Yeah, so I think uh, for us, it's really just kind of like expanding, um, increasing that visibility a little bit more. Um, as you know, like the two roles are kind of combined. So how we are supporting the Siena mm-hmm. community yeah. and how we can kind of get the word out about different cultures. And hopefully in the next year, we'll kind of build stronger connections with some of our alumni and like bring them back. Because as you mentioned, the step team, like yeah. having <laughs> some of the old alumni come back and step with the students and kind of share some of those experiences that they're having as professionals and like hopefully prepare our students to go on and do their thing once you know, they're done with Sienna here. So, And we're not trying to rush those student no, experiences never. for those listening <laughs> in, in Casey's right now. You know, enjoy that Sienna experience. Get involved with the Damiata Center. Get involved with the Women's Center. Get involved with the affinity groups within the mission mentoring. office. Um, the mentoring program as well. Uh, Big Brothers, Big Sisters program. Uh, so much that we could do that we could probably have a segment three on today's show to talk about. Um, but it's been so great to have you on to talk about the Sienna experience, to talk about the mission and the vision for the mission office. Uh, and the 50th event, if you're, if you're listening and, and you do want to attend on November 2nd, you can go to siena.edu slash alumni slash events. We hope to see you there, and we hope to have you back again, Davina, to talk about all the great things in the center. Have a great weekend. We'll see you next time here on the Saints and Alumni Show.